Hey everyone, this is Christina Del Rey from Astrology Simplified. You can follow me on my YouTube channel, the link is below. You can also follow me on Instagram at astrologychick2. And I also offer personal readings and or charts, um, whatever you're looking for, and the link for that is below as well. I am so grateful to Nadia for having me to talk to you on her channel. I owe my practice to years of Synchronicity University. Um, I think I have taken every single class that she offers and I really appreciate her vibes and um, she is really, you know, she's really kind of framed how I am as an astrologer today. So thank you so much, Nadia. Today I'm going to be talking to you about using planetary vibrations and intuition to empower children and teens. Unique background, I have a master's degree in special education and deaf education, but I also am an astrologer and I'm a mom of two children, um, ages 14 and 10. So I have a unique perspective on how to integrate planetary vibrations and working with children and teens. I work currently at a high school um, in the city of Buffalo where I work with teenagers. So it is very interesting. Um, you, you can eventually learn to feel the vibrations um, and how they correlate with astrology and how that can help you empower that child and help that child become the best they can be. A little bit about my own astrology. I am a Leo sun, Cancer rising, and Pisces moon. So I do have six water signs in my chart. I do tend to navigate life through feelings, uh, through vibrations. And if you can connect with that energy, if you are similar to me, um, I think that you will really enjoy what I have to tell you. So one thing I like to call um, a strength in a, in a child is their superpower. So it kind of became a thing in my house with my children as I studied their charts and I studied um, their strengths and tried to play to their strengths to help them have self-esteem. And that was always my big issue was that I wanted them to have a strong sense of self and self-esteem. So it kind of became like, oh, that you're so good at that, that's your superpower. And I noticed when I, when I did this with the kids at school, it became even better. Like they were, um, they were really empowered to see that they were good at something and that you can go to them for something because that's their superpower. And I'm here to tell you that every child has a superpower um, and you can see it in the chart. And even if you don't know how to read charts at all, you can still figure it out. So as a teacher and a parent, um, my job is to guide children to navigate their lives and to make good decisions, right? Because they might make good decisions while we're in front, while they're in front of us, but when we're not there, what kind of decisions are they making, right? So that's what that's what this is all about. Um, once we teach them, you know, how to make decisions, and we can teach them that based on their own astrology. Um, and it empowers them. They, they have something to refer to. They have a frame of mind to refer to. And it depends on how deep you want to get. If you don't want to get that deep, you, can, you, you don't have to. So each planet has a high vibration to it and a low vibration to it. And if we can teach children to tap into the highest vibration of the expression of the planets that are strong in their chart, we are really empowering them. We're empowering that superpower that they have to make good decisions. And when you make good decisions, um, you know, there's, there's consequences, right? There's consequences to both good decisions and bad decisions. And <clears throat> very often when you make a good decision, there is a good consequence. So that is the aim of what I'm going to talk about today. I'm starting with the sun sign because everybody is pretty familiar with it. Um, and also to, you know, as a teacher, you can automatically know their sun sign just by looking at their birth date, right? By, by your students. And as a special ed teacher, I'm supposed to know their individual needs. So that means I have to sort of, I have to really look at them. I really have to know them personally. I can't just like, they can't just be a face in the crowd for me because I'm a special ed teacher. I have to know their needs. I have to know, 
I almost have to know their needs before they do. And I know that those of you who teach know what I'm talking about. Um, and the sun sign is really like a, a jumping off point. Um, so if you know the child's sun sign, you can kind of think about what the higher vibrations of that sun sign are and the lower vibrations of that sun sign. And then you can kind of notice if the child is acting like his sun sign. And if he is, then you're going to direct him more towards the higher end, the higher vibrations. And, you know, children are not only going to act like their sun sign. If you know anything about astrology, that is only one piece. But you are essentially growing into your sun sign. You are growing into that. Um, you've come to you've come to the earth plane so that you can grow into that sun sign and become the best you can be. So it it is very um, useful to know that sun sign. So for instance, Taurus, Taurus, the high vibration of Taurus is goal setting, not giving up. Um, Taurus is slow and steady. Um, they don't necessarily pick up the material very quickly, but they persevere. And that is really the superpower of a Taurus. They also like the five senses. So if they can integrate the five senses, um, that really makes them very happy. That makes them feel very good. And there's like a mind-body connection there too. The lower vibration is stubbornness. It could be gluttony, materialism. So my own daughter is a Taurus and when she was a baby, I'm going to say like, I don't know, maybe one or two and I would have to get her ready for daycare and she would want to get dressed by herself and she did not have the dexterity. She did not have the OT skills to put her shirt on, but she was insistent that she had to put her shirt on. So she would put it over her head and she would struggle and struggle and struggle and she would cry and cry and cry and I would say, please let me help you. And she'd say, no, do it myself, right? So it was um, very frustrating. So at night we used to have, have these discussions that, um, you know, it's okay to let mommy help and you know, you're, you're still good. You know, you're, you're not giving up. You're still gonna try. I'm just gonna help a little bit to get you there. And eventually she was able to put her own shirt on you know but when she was then we celebrated that we celebrated every time she got to a goal because the taurus that really um that really empowers them to meet that goal so years later um she was she decided that she wanted to climb um she wanted to climb up like jungle gyms and she would make me take her to every jungle gym in the city so that I could, you know, wa I could watch while she tries to conquer all of them. So this is like, this is the goal. This is a, a high vibration of Taurus. This is a high expression because I was supporting her and her goals while I was there to help. I wasn't going to do it for her, but I was letting her know that, you know, I'm kind of here and like, you know, you can go at your own pace. Years later, she has found dance, which is the mind-body connection, and she is always goal setting, always doing something with dance, and um, she actually got quite good at acro, and she said, you know, she has a very strong core, and she said, mom, that's my superpower, and I was like, oh yeah, so it kind of became a thing for me to look for every child's superpower based on their vibrations, um, you know, my intuition and the planets. So let's say you have a Pisces um, and the higher vibration of Pisces is artistic expression, music, um, communion with the divine, which was like, they often find that when they're doing something artistic. Um, empathy, they have a lot of empathy. Now the lower vibration of Pisces is escapist behavior, which can be being lazy, um, sleeping a lot. Um, it can even be like acting like a martyr, but also, and also drug addiction. I should have mentioned that too, because when you're talking about teens, that can be an issue. So you really want to praise anytime you see them doing that artistic, um, you know, that artistic action that they are doing. Like, for instance, dance, or if they're making music, or if they are doing poetry, 
um, anything that they are, th that is their way of connecting with the divine. And if they can figure that out and that makes them feel good, then that can be their superpower. So you can, you can send them in a group and say, oh, you know, the Pisces child's going to do all the drawing or they're going to do the artistic piece. Um, but, you know, if that child knows that you appreciate that one thing about them that they're good at, you're going to get so much more out of them and, you know, and they're going to, they're going to work harder for you. And that's, that's just the way it goes. So one more example, if you have a Sagittarius, um, student, for example, um, so the high vibration is truth searching. Okay. That's for Sagittarius. And there, there's a real need for Sagittarius to have adventure, exploration. Um, they do enjoy philosophies and thinking about philosophies. Um, they are interested in different cultures. And there is a real freedom principle with Sagittarius. The lower vibration of Sagittarius can be blurting out thoughts without a filter at all. So this is the student that just mm, puts it out there, right? and feeling like they are right all of the time you know like only i know the truth and you don't know you're wrong um so their superpower might be um to learn about philosophies it could be to explore something in depth to find the truth in it um they could be a leader of a group um, or a leader on an adventure um you might be able to point out these things to them to direct their energy rather than, you know, always blurting out. And I, I had a student like this and she was, I want to say she was like in 10th or 11th grade years and years ago. And she just was so annoying and she would just blurt out and I would tell her, you are such a pain, but someday that strength of yours, like the fact that you can just, you know, the fact that you are, are searching for truth and you're able to verbalize that truth, once you get that under control, that is going to be your money maker. That is going to be what sets you apart from everybody, you know, and I, I she never forgot that. And years later, I know she was doing some activism or she was on some kind of board at the college. I don't remember, but um, she ended up being a huge leader. You know, she was just such a leader and doing wonderful things. And um, I've been teaching a long time, so it's hard to remember sometimes, but it's sometimes, you know, she had teachers that were really so annoyed with her. And I was annoyed too, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I was able to see it as a positive because I knew that that, was go that fearlessness that Sagittarius has that was going to lead her if she, as long as she went to the high vibration that was going to lead her into a, a good life you know that was going to lead her down a good road so you know we just, astrology is just another tool to help students to empower children and i suggest you know nadia's um book uh, astrology realized really spells out the high vibration and low vibration of each planet. And I really recommend that um, for educators, even if you don't read any of the other stuff, just that part to know um, the high vibration and the low vibration, at least you know where the soul is going, what the soul came to learn, and then you're pushing them in the right direction. So the sun gives you a great jumping off point, especially, you know, you, I mean, it's hard to learn everybody's astrology, right? But when you're a special ed teacher, you kind of work with a core group of, of students. So some are more challenging than others. And if you have a really challenging student, um, what I end up doing is I go to the moon and you're not gonna know a, a child's moon. Um, you know, you're, you're not gonna know it just offhand by looking at their birthday. But if it's somebody you really wanna help and you're like, oh, this kid, I just, I don't know what to do. I need strategies, you know what I mean? Um, I recommend trying to find out what their moon is. Go to astro.com, just look it up, um, you know, put in their birth date and their location. You don't need to know the time. You can probably figure out which moon they are if you know the energies, um, you know, if it's like on a day where the moon switched. 
but this is so valuable because the moon is emotions. It's what makes you feel good, right? So if you know what they like and makes them feel good, you have an in, right? You have an in and you can use that to your advantage. Um, so for instance, if you find that your hard student has a Scorpio moon, okay? So this is a very deep, powerful, like emotional energy. Um, this is probably going to be somebody who is emotional, but kind of quiet about it. Um, it it's just it, the higher vibration of Scorpio is transformation. It's rebirth um, of something. It's, um, it's life changing. Okay. So this is, this is a very difficult moon to have because the lower energy is jealousy, revenge, um, control, manipulation. Okay. But we all know students like this, right? They, they are trying to navigate the world. They're trying to figure it out. So a lot of times if you recognize that this child um, has very deep emotions and deep thoughts, um, that, that will empower them. And the biggest thing I would think that could empower a Scorpio moon would be, um, you know, if some kind of trauma had happened to them or some kind of situation that had happened and you remind them that, you know, you are who you are because this happened and you're still strong and you made it through and you helped transform your brothers and sisters or you helped transform your household, you know, you held it together. Um, whatever you can do to connect um, and sort of make a transformation their superpower. Sometimes they could like to transform um, using makeup or things like that. So it, it depends what it is, but just kind of think about that high vibration of transformation and that that is something that feels good to them. So if you know this, you might be able to even you know, give them a part in a group where they're transforming something. Um, it's just that much more information to integrate, to help that student or your own child. Now, if you want to get more in depth with that moon, if you're like looking at your child's chart, um, you would want to look at the house. Um, you want to look at the ruler of the moon. Um, you want to look at any aspects it has to it, if it has hard aspects, if it has easy aspects. So that's going to tell you more of a story, right? If you're working with just students, like the moon um, energy, that'll be enough for you to kind of make a connection there and then move on from there. So when you're working with children, um, a lot of times there will be a planet that is very loud coming out. And you can feel this the more that you work with them. And my Pisces moon is in the eighth house. I like to sit back, watch how they are, evaluate their behaviors. And the first planet we're going to talk about that could be very strong in a chart is Mars. Okay. So the higher vibration of Mars is action on a productive level. It's passion. It's where you have the drive to, for power, that you want a lot of power. You put a lot of energy in this area and it's also survival. It's like that what you do in the moment when you spur of the moment and the low vibration um, is, you know, like Mars is the God of war. So, you know, it can be, um, it can be that war energy that like, you know, argumentative energy. Um, it has to do with anger, um, triggers, like we all know, special ed, all know um, what triggers our students, right? So that can be Mars. Um, impatience, hurting others without thoughts to consequences. So, you know, going back to the sun sign, if you have an Aries in your room um, and you feel this, you know, if you feel this Mars energy, um, you know, it's, chances are not only is it Aries, but it's a strong Mars. Or if you, you know, if you have, um, if you have an Aquarian, my daughter's an Aquarian, and you're like, gee, you know, I see a lot of that behavior, you know, the, a lot of impulsiveness. Um, and we all know that students can be very impulsive. Usually that's Mars that you're feeling. 
So when Mars is strong and it's at a lower level, it's going to be that student who is extremely impulsive. Um, you know, you turn your back and they're running out of the classroom or, you know, they're, they're throwing things or it's just those little behaviors. Um, and they drive you crazy. They do. Um, and you might need to, you really might need to connect with this Mars energy and see how you can push this child to use the higher vibration of it. For instance, um, my daughter could not sit still. Um, she was acting without thought, biting children at daycare, um, going to the principal's office at daycare, um, getting angry, uh, nonstop energy. She was pulling the dog's tail. Um, these are all, you know, running all over the place, touching everything. These are all just like Mars behaviors, no control, right? No impulse control. And it took a while to really get her to, you know, to not be so impulsive. But once I started studying that her, her moon was in Aries, okay? So she had a prominent Mars, right? This is a prominent Mars energy. And if you know anything about the nodes, she also had um, the North Node in Aries. So she, I figured out I needed to embrace her Mars, right? I was not going to erase those impulsive behaviors. I was not gonna erase that Mars from her. I had to change it into a superpower somehow. So um, we, we figured out positive ways to direct that energy. So she's a teenager now and I just asked her the other day, how do you handle your anger now? Like, what do you do? And I, and I know that she runs because um, Mars, one of the big things, you know, Mars being the god of war, they love that in the moment, warlike, um, impulsive, and a, a high expression of that is exercise, sports. So push them into sports make that a focus of their life and everything else will kind of fall into place. But a lot of times, you know, you have to find which sport they like and she didn't like all the sports, you know, she was picky, but she did find one that she liked. Um, we also, you know, we talked a lot about consequences, you know, that that's a big thing because people who have a prominent Mars, they are impatient. They don't, they don't think of consequences. So that is where, you know, we come in as caregivers, parents, you know, light workers, teachers, we have to teach them that consequences um, hurt others and that we have to be mindful of others because this, um, this is really all about consciousness, right? If they are not aware that they have this energy and they are not aware that the high, there's a high vibration to it, they're going to continue along the road of just being impulsive, hurting others, acting crazy, maybe hurting themselves. Um, so, you know, if this is your child, you want to go to the house that Mars is in to figure out where to channel that energy, what's the highest vibration, take a look at the aspects as well, um, to see how hard it's going to be to, um, you know, to channel that energy, but it's very, very valuable. Um, and my daughter was telling me yesterday that, you know, I, I said, how do you, how do you handle your anger? Like I was saying. And not only the sports, but she was saying, well, I punch things, mom. And I was like, like what? And she's like a pillow. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. You know, we, we talked about that. She punches pillows when she has to. Um, so, you know, those are just little ways for people with that Mars energy to get it out. Um, it, it, she has it and she knows it. She's able to say, okay, yeah, that's my Mars. You know, that's my moon that, you know, ruled by Mars. So it really empowers her. Um, it's, it's still a frustration because Mars, you know, Mars is, is an activator. So it's a frustration, but she knows how to handle it and she's young, you know, so that'll benefit her later in life. Now, when you have some, when you have a Mars transit, you can also feel this a little bit too, because if there's an opposition or a square, this is when a student is triggered. So not only are they normally impulsive, but then somebody comes in and maybe they go and hit them or maybe they go and, you know, and they're triggered. They it could be an opposition. We are all triggered by Mars. You know, we can't escape that, but it's how we react. Um, you know, and I always teach the students, you cannot help how you feel. You're gonna feel what you feel. The only thing you can help is your choice on that, on how you act on that feeling. 
So that's usually very empowering when they realize that. So how does Mars become a superpower? Um, athletics, typically. It could be just them putting their energy into something like goals. Um, it depends where their Mars is, but you know, number one with Mars usually has to do with some kind of exercise, whether it be independent, if they don't work well with others, then you want to do, you want them to do track. Um, you know, if you want, if they, you know, enjoy other people and socialization, then get them into other kinds of sports that, you know, that, um, engages others swimming, you know what I mean? Anything that you can, um, anything that's going to get that energy out of their system and hopefully make them tired because they don't get tired easily. And then I, the biggest one for us as special education teachers is Mercury. Okay. So because Mercury is communication and it's how you learn. So, and you know, we spend, you know, we spend our whole college education learning how kids learn. Correct. So Mercury um, the higher vibration is communication with purpose, learning and applying learning, okay? So low end, uh, Mercury can be um, excessively talking. So, you know, somebody with a very strong Mercury is going to be the talker in the class. It's going to be the kid that will not be quiet. Um, and it could be one of the gossipers too. Um, Gemini, you know, Gemini is known for gossiping. It's a lower end. So, you know, Mercury can be that gossipy energy or it can be just talking for no reason about really nothing and just kind of going in circles. Um, it's very surface. So you want to change that. Um, you want to change that energy. So you have to look at how they learn. So a student who's very earthy, or if you know your child's chart, take a look at where that mercury is placed, if it's placed in an earth house, a water house, um, and then also look at the sign, and you're gonna kind of combine those two. But typically an earthy um, mercury is going to learn through the five senses. So this is going to be um, very methodical learning too, like repetition over and over and over again. It has to be through the senses, so there has to be tap, you know, it has to be tactile. Um, a fire mercury is going to be very active and doing and leading people, um, you know, developing confidence through that. And water, which is what I am, um, is going to be more quiet and art artistic and going to learn through things that evoke emotion. So, and, and contemplation, quiet contemplation. Air, if somebody is strong air or has mercury in air, it's going to be more mental thoughts, quick thoughts. Um, they might even be multitasking. Like sometimes you get the student who can listen to music and complete an assignment and do a great job. And I'm like, how? <laughs> And that has to be a student who has a lot of air energy because they can multitask. I can't do that. I am. I have six water signs. I cannot do that. But you can see how if you were to try to make a water, somebody who is very water heavy, you know, shy and um, kind of observant, and you put them in a fire role where they were being a leader, you can see how this could make them uncomfortable. So not that you don't ever want to do that, but you just want to ease them into that because um, it really your mercury is so important because it's how you learn. So if we're not catering to how your child is learning, then they're not learning to their you know, capacity. They're not learning to the, the highest vibration that they possibly could. So once you figure out how this child learns, that be, kind of becomes a superpower. Um, that becomes so important. So anything that's going on, you know that you can adjust the environment so that his or her mercury is at the optimal level. Saturn. So Saturn is another one I tend to intuit. Um, if you look at what is difficult for a child, where do they have issues? Um, 
where do things not come easy to them? This could be the area of their Saturn. And Saturn is all about restriction, hard lessons, hard work, and it's where perseverance is going to be key. My daughter, the dancer, the younger one, um, she always says practice makes permanent. Okay, I'm sure one of her fabulous dance teachers taught her that. Um, but it's basically nothing comes easy, right? Um, for me, learning wasn't easy. I had to find my own way. So, you know, that I had to figure out my lessons there. Um, how do I learn the best? What are my talents? You know, so if, if you see a student struggling in a certain area, it's possible that they have to do more work in that area because that's where Saturn is. And it feels really hard, right? It feels really restrictive. Like, oh, why can't this just come easy to me? It comes easy to Johnny. Why can't it come easy to me? Well, that's not that's not what your astrology says. That's not what your soul was saying when it came in, right? You didn't pick those lessons. You picked these lessons. So yes, you know, while Johnny might get that very easily, you're going to have to work a little harder. Um, but that doesn't mean that it can't become your superpower because hard work and persistence, becoming that rock, can really um, can really take you very far. And with Saturn, the lessons come later. It comes a couple years down the road. When just when you think you've worked so hard, you work so hard, um, and then all of a sudden you get a payoff, and you're like wow, I'm so glad I did all that work, you know? So um, it's important because students will often want to give up. Your own child will want to give up. So if you see that, um, you, you don't want to, obviously you don't want to push them to do something, you know, that they are, I mean, you do push them out of their comfort zone, you do, but you have to do it at a slow, steady pace. And um, wherever they feel restricted or held back in the moment, you know, that that's, that's where our job is to remind them that practice makes permanence, you know, practice makes, makes you better. Um, and, you know, support them in that way. Um, if you escape, now people do escape their Saturn, that has consequences too. And you'll end up having to work harder, even harder than you did if you would have done your Saturn lessons. So, Saturn is tricky. You got to make sure that um, you do your Saturn lessons, work where you're supposed to work. And if it's in the chart of your child, you want to take a look at the house it's in. You want to take a look at the aspects, um, you know, so just so they can get familiar with that energy and they know where they have to work harder in life for the rewards. Now, if it's a Saturn transit, you can kind of feel this too, because this will be your student who gets into trouble three times in one day. Um, this will be the student that gets in trouble with the law and he gets arrested. Um, this will be your student that just, you know, he's going through a hard time. But it's almost like, you know, it's like he's he's not following the rules. So things are coming down hard on him and or her. And um, you have to, you know, remind them that, you know, that the situation if they are going to try to get something done easily. Um, Saturn doesn't like easy. Saturn likes hard work. Saturn's not gonna pay, um, give a payoff for easy. Um, Saturn is going to make you work hard so you can earn those things. You can't just get them. So that's where, that's where it gets tricky with students. So, you know, that's the time when you support them. Yes, that was a bad decision. You know, how can we work harder next time? I know this is really hard for you. Um, I think that once, when we when we understand this idea um, and students feel they can come to us, we um, tend to make a bigger impact on their choices in the future. Another planet to intuit. I love this one. This is my favorite. Uh, Uranus. So the high vibration of Uranus is freedom and liberation, uniqueness, and, you know, being true to who you are. The low vibration is erratic behavior, rebellion, uh, rebelling just to rebel for no reason, just to be difficult. Um, they often like to shock you too. They really enjoy the sh shock value. So a lower, vib lower expression of Uranus is um, that shock value. Do something just to shock people. And we all have students like this. We can all think of some. 
but my daughter has a strong Uranus and I'll explain that in a minute. But if someone has a strong Uranus in their chart, like you're going to feel this, like it's going to be, once you recognize it, it's half the battle to be honest, but Aquarius, right? Aquarius is going to be someone with Uranus, maybe prominent, but this is going to be the energy that this is the kid that walks in and does not blend at all. He's very different or she is very different. Um, she may have very out there thinking, uh, might be very detached, doesn't, you know, doesn't form really close bonds, maybe more, just more detached, not real touchy feely. Could be rebellious, um, could feel just weird, could feel totally out of place and weird. Um, you know, they may do something shocking or wear something shocking. Um, and, and it's, it can be sort of erratic energy too. So, so my 14 year old in her chart, not only is she an Aquarian, but she has Uranus with unaspected. So it's not talking to any other planets. And when a planet is by itself and doesn't make it any aspects to other planets it's loud it's very loud and so as soon as she walks in a door you can see just from the way she looks that she does not blend and although she's beautiful she just stands out of the crowd and this is when you learn to embrace that um her superpower is going to be her uniqueness and part of you know her soul lessons are going to be how do i integrate my uniqueness into the world how do i make the fact that i don't blend that i stand out how am i going to make that work for me and i'm how am i going to help others with that how am i going to help the world with my differences so i'm sure you all can think of students like this and one of the key things with uranus too is to allow them freedom to experiment. So, you know, if they want purple hair, you know what I mean? It's like, well, it's great, you know? Um, they have to try on all kinds of different personas to find out, you know, where they stand and to really appreciate the uniqueness. But if you let them know you see it and that you think it's great that they stand out and that you really enjoy their uniqueness and you're so happy that they're unique and that they don't blend. This can save you a lot of heartache, <laughs> uh, especially with my daughter. And, um, you know, I mean, she's going to do something great someday because she, she's just so unique. Like she's just so, um, powerful. That's a really good way to say it. She's very powerful. And although she might not feel like she blends in or she might feel weird, someday that is going to be so wonderful for her. And she's going to really find her place. And that's my job, right? To help her find it. But I'm letting her, you know, I'm let, allowing her the freedom to explore so she can find that in a safe way, of course. We don't ever want anybody doing anything that's not safe. And with Uranus too, you want to remember that like self-esteem comes into play because if you're feeling like you're different or you're feeling like you don't fall into place, if you don't have a parent or a teacher telling you, that's wonderful. You're so unique. You know, that's a great thing. Um, they might feel so out of place that they could start contemplating suicide or they could have extremely low self-esteem. So, you know, you just want to make sure that they know that their place is to carve a place out for themselves being different and unique and that that's okay and that it's actually like wonderful so if uranus comes along as a transit to a personal planet they might start acting differently um even if it like i would say uncharacteristically for themselves because uranus is like shakes up it turns everything um you know upside down and so they might start acting differently or erratic and they have to find a way to sort of figure out what their truth is and how they're going to live by it and how to get rid of that restless energy because uranus is very restless so if you notice a kid or your or your child is becoming very restless um it might be a uranus um, transit so you know you want to give them some space and some freedom to um 
you know, to, to experiment, but also to be safe and to remember that there are consequences. And also, you know, that this might be like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna dance anymore after they've danced for 20, you know, or I don't know, however many years. And you're like, okay, well, wait a minute, let's not get rid of all of that, um, you know, all of that dance training. Maybe we can move it to something else. You know what I mean? Like we, with Uranus, you don't want to, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You want to make sure that they take that energy um, and they explore something else and find out if that's for them or not. An example of a Uranus transit was when I, I had a student, she would come in every day and she's smart and she was, you know, very grounded. She was just very, um, you know, she was a rock. And one day she came in and something at home happened and it just literally shook her world. Like her whole family life completely changed from that moment. It was never gonna be the same. And I don't know for sure that it was Uranus, but I kind of, you know, you kind of intuit that. And it was so shocking and so like, you just couldn't believe it. And like, it just kept getting worse. She kept coming in and she kept telling me and I was like, oh my gosh, like, how are you so put together? How are you such a rock? You know, and, and I'm assuming that she had a lot of earth energy or a strong Saturn because honestly, she dealt with it so well. Um, and I, I still talk to her actually. Um, and you know, she's had some shakeups then too. And she is just, she's a rock, you know, and, um, and that's her superpower. And I, you know, it's just important to really recognize those things and, um, so that they can build, you know, students can build off of those superpowers that you give them and, you know, and, and, and make their lives better, you know, and to be able to deal with it better okay neptune so this is another planet that you just won't miss um uranus is very you know it, people with a strong uranus that's loud neptune i can detect a neptune um, or pisces energy um, the higher vibration of neptune spiritual uh, imagination uh, creating creativity artistic expression writing poetry rapping fashion. Um, sometimes like people with a heavy Neptune can become like makeup artists, hairstylists. Um, Neptune rules like, you know, the movies. So it's like the glamour, but it's not like, it's not, it's not real. It's kind of like, it's what, you know, like obviously like movie stars don't really look like movie stars off screen. They, um, it's about the illusion. Let's put it that way. And the lower end of Neptune is self-sabotage, delusion, lies, drugs, and addictions. So you want to look out for those lower, um, those lower vibrations because um, that can be very serious. But I always find these Neptunian kids the hardest to teach. And maybe it's because I was one of them. I don't know. But this is the kid who is like in a far realm somewhere like they're sitting in class physically but you're looking at them and they mentally are somewhere else and you're like um earth to child like hello hello you know what i mean obviously you're not going to say that but you know they are in their own they're in their own realm and you know one thing goes you know one thing goes in one ear out the other and you're like, did you even hear me? Did you even understand? Like, where where are you? Um, I do have a strong Neptune in my chart. I'm a huge daydreamer. I also have two um, very difficult aspects to my Neptune. So remembering things. I was in my own realm. I was not listening to the teacher. Um, I was, you know, I was busy in my own thoughts. Uh, homework. No, <laughs> I didn't remember homework and you would have told me homework was due. Nope, nope, didn't hear it. Um, very difficult to follow a schedule. Um, this is the student who um, you feel like they are in another world. So you have to, with this energy, you know, because with Neptune, part of or Neptune and Pisces, 
part of them is in another realm. It's in another dimension. And we have to sort of respect that. But it can also become their superpower too, because this is very creative energy. This is, um, and when they're creating, they're channeling the divine. So if they're making poetry or they're creating uh, macrame or they're, you know, they're creating pottery or maybe they're writing, um, that's what I used to do. And, or, may, you know, whatever they're putting that creative energy into, that becomes their superpower. But as a teacher and as a parent, you're constantly pulling them back from that realm. You're like, okay, come back, come back. Um, I literally have a student who looks up to his right, and I know he sees spirits, I know it. And, you know, I never asked him, but I just know. Um, and he smiles, and he's like, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, are you listening? You good? Okay, we're right here, you know, and, um, and you know, and I understand it on such a level, like, I'm like, I'm so you. Um, but, you know, at the same time, when you have a Neptunian student, and they are so pulled to the other side, that you have a hard time with things like exams, and things that they have to know that they have no interest in knowing. So this becomes really difficult. So there are ways to get around this. For instance, um, you know, this is the kid that you have to write out their schedule and stick it to their notebook so they see it in bright yellow letters or bright yellow paper. Um, this is the kid that's going to, you know, they're gonna lose every single paper that they have, they're a mess, their locker's a mess. Um, but you just want them to embrace this as a good thing, try to figure out um, how to bring them back to reality and then give them a few minutes to kind of go back to that spiritual place. And if you can integrate um, their artistic abilities with the lessons, that, that's even more of a win. Okay, finally, Pluto. So this is the extremely intense child. Um, you know, Plut Plutonian people, Pluto is the planet of seeing the ugly. Um, the high vibration is transformation and regeneration and being empowered. But the low vibration um, is obsession, betrayal, abuse, revenge. Um, and sometimes these people who have, you know, Pluto very strongly in their chart can be victims of abuse. You know, not always, but you know, you can tell when um, a student's been abused. And, you know, they, they may need something more than you can provide. Um, understanding, of course, a safe place to express their feelings, yes, but this is like, this is the type of child where you call the social worker and you make sure that they have therapy on their IEPs and things like that. You know, this is, this is the child who, um, you, you know, it, it takes a village to um, unravel the ugly that they have seen so early in life. And, this can be changed into a superpower and this is where you would get you know um on board with the social worker and you would say um you know we both think you're so strong because you've survived this look at you look what you've been through and you've survived and now you know you're gonna you're gonna go off to college or you're going to do you know you're gonna go to vocational school and it's gonna be fantastic so um it's it's difficult and and Sometimes you will also intuit it as um, a transit as well. And this is the student who is currently being abused or currently going through something that is very difficult. And sometimes this can be the student who's suicidal. And sometimes this can just be a student who, you know, their behavior has changed. And they will tell you, Miss, I'm going through it. I'm going through it. And you know, like, so anytime these Pluto behaviors, you're intuiting, this is when you want to call the social worker, or you want to get on board, you want to see what's going on with the family. Um, and you know, so that you can make that transformation and th that focus um, eventually move to positive vibrations and positive energy. So one last piece of advice for educators and for parents. Um, is to know the astrological weather because 
um, they act as triggers for students, you know, and the students don't understand that the vibrations affect them. They don't get it. Most adults don't understand that. Um, so if, you know, you're ahead of the game, if you can keep up with what's going on in the sky. So full moons, big triggers. I always warn everybody at work, full moon, full moon, especially if it's one that's not aspected well, you will get things like fights. You will get things like, um, you know, kids freaking out. Uh, they might have to go to the counselor more. Um, you know, eclipses especially. Um, it's going to be a busy day. It's going to be heightened energy. So, you know, and, and sometimes I'll let the kids know too. Oh, full moon today. You know, just be on your best behaviors. And um, just knowing these things, these triggers that could come, um, it puts you ahead of the game. It really does. And tuning into that intuition. When, when it's a full moon or when there's something going on astrologically and you're tuning in to mm, something ain't right here and every teacher knows what I'm talking about and every parent knows, um, you might be able just to figure it out a little bit better and have more of an edge. I hope you enjoyed this talk on astrological superpowers. Comment below your astrological superpower or maybe your child's astrological superpower and let me know if you can figure out which planet that correlates with. Um, I'm so interested in your comments and please come visit me on my YouTube channel. The link is below and um, I hope to see you soon. Thank you.